Hi, I'm John Gaska, a research specialist in the Department of Agronomy at UW-Madison. And I'm Matt Ruark, a professor in the Department of Soil Science at UW-Madison and extension specialist in the UW Division of Extension. And I'm Sean Connolly, the state soybean and small grain specialist at UW-Madison. Now in the state of Wisconsin, we roughly have about 500,000 acres of small grains on an annual basis. That's either following oat or winter wheat. And one of the things we've started seeing is a really big push for adding cover crops into that system. So John, you've been working here for a, a while in, in bringing cover crops into this system. What, what do we have out here? This is a field that was in winter wheat this year. We have a three uh, year rotation with corn, soybeans, and wheat. And after we harvest our wheat in July, we're, um, we put cover crops out so that we can kind of protect the soil. We've chosen um, radish and clover in this, in this particular field. Uh, there'll be corn on this field next year. Um, the radish, as you can see, is, is growing quite well, even though despite the drought, and we're getting a lot of green material on top to kind of protect against erosion. And we have the clover in there too for the, for the uh, nitrogen uh, benefits for the following uh, corn crop. So Matt, you know, in terms of the systems we're dealing with out here, what, what does this mix mean and how does this really benefit next year's corn crop? Well, so the, the stuff we've done with radish is that it does a great job of trapping nitrogen uh, over the winter season. However, we haven't noticed that it's going to release that nitrogen in time for that next corn crop to use it. So uh, if you're interested in erosion control and trying to smother out some weeds, radish is the way to go. Uh, you know, there is some clover in here. That's the problem in a year like this with uh, uh, clovers that is... They're pretty, they're pretty sensitive. They don't get going very quick. However, if you can get a good stand of clover going, uh, at a time like this, berseem clover, crimson clover are good options. The winter kill, and on the research trials we've done on farm in Wisconsin, we can see a 40 to 60 pound uh, supply of nitrogen to that next corn crop, meaning you can cut back your nitrogen by 40 to 60 pounds. So the next big thing we'll start seeing here, Matt, is that the fact that corn silage is starting to come off. What is the best cover crop system in Wisconsin following corn silage? So following corn silage, it's also about manure, right? So usually we're working in a system where it's corn silage and then it's a fall manure application. So cover crops work really well uh, in those type of systems because those are systems that are probably going to be a little bit leaky. We're putting out nitrogen well ahead of when the corn crop needs it. So a cover crop like winter rye, that's going to be great. It's going to, uh, it's going to uh, establish pretty quickly in the fall. It'll grow into the spring, provide some erosion control in the spring as well. However, you got to kill it in the spring. So you still have to manage it. And if the biomass gets too big, we can see some potential negative effects. So if you're interested in uh, trying like a starter uh, cover crop, might be something like spring barley or oats that'll grow pretty well in the fall and the winter kill. You won't have to terminate them. Uh, you want to terminate them chemically, but uh, they may have enough, if you get enough biomass, there might be enough erosion control to, to get something going or have some benefit in the spring. So when we're out here looking at this thing, what's the, probably the, the biggest innovation that you've seen with implementing cover crops into these systems? Um, with with uh, establishing cover crops, um, some of the innovations are, are be better drills and also um, aerial seeding too of, of, of some of these crops. We can, um, we can uh, certainly um, use a drone or airplanes to seed uh, many acres of, of the crop. If it needs to be worked in, it can be worked in with a, with a light tillage there. But there's, um, there's uh, several ways at least uh, we, could, we can establish those, those crops uh, effectively. Um, they need good, uh, all the crops need good seed to soil contact. And so um, we need to get that, that seed in the ground uh, a little bit at least to get some moisture and, and to start to growing. Then so Matt, then in terms of the sustainability, how has the implementation of cover crops really helped our Wisconsin farmers become more sustainable? Well, I think it's helped them be more sustainable by keeping the soil in place. That's one keeps the soil productive, uh, helps maintain organic matter, uh, which you know we've been able to demonstrate relates to improvements in soybean and corn yields in the state. Uh, so if we can control those two things, keep our organic matter and keep our soil in place, that's going to help our sustainability. Excellent. If you have any more questions related to cover crops, please make sure you can follow uh, the, the Division of Extension on Twitter or contact your local county agent or regional educator.